I grew up on the south side of Chicago. I come from a family of nine, big Catholic family, and like a lot of Catholic families, all the drama and all the color that's involved in that. And I went through the Catholic grammar school system uh, with all the nuns and the, the uh, Benedictine priests. And uh, then I went on to Catholic high school. And, and then when it was time to go to college, I went to a, a University of Western Illinois in Macomb, Illinois. And uh, it had uh, two reputations. The, the football team was the worst in the world. And they drank more beer per student than any other university in North America. And it was like, wow, this is perfect for me. So it was just far enough away from home, about a four hour drive. So nobody was going to pop in and visit you without an announcement. And I, I got my independence. I got to the university there and, and, um, and I started partying and having a good time. And within two years, I, I just didn't put the work in and I had to come home uh, that uh, my dad said, hey, you know, let's take a semester off. Let's see if uh, working in my business is going to be a, a better path for you. And uh, so I came home. My dad owned a drapery store and he made drapes for Sears. You can imagine in a big work room and there's 15 tables and I was assigned table number one. I would cut the material, then it would be passed to the next table and they would hem it, then they passed it to the next table and they would put the lining in it and then the next table would pleat it and then the next table would fold it and then the next table would bag it. And then I would watch all day long, you know, the UPS truck coming up, picking up the draperies and taking it off to another happy customer. And my dad had this business. He'd been in business for 20 years making drapes for Sears very successful and he was home every night and it was open from you know from nine to five and he had all the you know the factory workers in there and you didn't talk to anybody all day it was uh interacting with inanimate objects and my grandma was 70 years old his mother was kind of ran operations and i tell you i did it for a couple of a oh, couple of months four or five months and i was like oh this is not the path that i want and it was on Easter of 1977 where I met uh, the man that was going to take my life in a whole new direction. And uh, I was looking out the window, all our family members were looking out the window on Easter, big party, everybody's having a great time. And this blue Lincoln Continental pulls up the driveway, 1977, brand new, the color of my tie. And I couldn't even see who was driving. I'm looking, who's driving that car? And uh, out jumped this fella who had a suit on that was the same color as the car. So if you can imagine the exterior and the interior of the car was the same color and a suit the same color. Now, this is 1977, highly fashionable at the time. And he walked up and he says, I'm Jim. And I said, hey, Jim, I'm Joe. And he goes, yeah, I'm your, I'm your uncle. And uh, you know, I'm married to your, your, uh, your aunt. And oh yeah, and we started talking. I go, what do you do for a living? He goes, oh, I, I'm in the real estate business. He says, let me correct you. Uh, the real estate business is in, is in me. Uh, you know, I, I'm not in the real estate business. I said, oh, wow. And he said, uh, you know, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm working with my dad in the drapery business. And as I said it, I realized that it wasn't in me. It, it was in my dad, but it wasn't in me. And Jim, it was in him. And I could see the passion. And I could see the excitement of when something was really in you. So I said, well, tell me about this. So he started to describe to me how he helped people buy and sell homes and, and you know, the amount of money that it was possible and, and how few young people were in it, that if I got into it, I could really soar. And I got excited. And he said, I said, how do I do it? And he goes, well, go take the test. And he says, it's easy as you know, filling out an application. You send in a check for 60 bucks and you get three chances at it. And, and uh, then you get your license. So, you know, unbeknownst to my dad, I went and got the application, filled it in. And... Uh, yeah, took it three times, you know, exercised all my options there. And on the third time that the envelope came, I looked at it, I go, oh, it passed. I was so excited. And uh, I remember sitting down with my dad. I said, hey, dad, you know, I've decided that I'm going to go to work with Jim Wessel and uh, I'm going to sell real estate. And he was so disappointed. It was one of those moments that I think I crushed him because it was his dream to see his oldest son take over his business. And he was like, you know, Joey, I love you so much. Um, you'll probably amount to nothing, but go do what you have to do. And it was my first motivational talk. And I thought, you know, I'm going to show you, Dad. I'm going to make something of myself. And I went to work with Jim. Jim said, attach yourself to my hip. I'm going to teach you how to work. And boy, did he teach me how to work. We worked, you know, anywhere from 10 to 12 hours a day, seven days a week. At the end of the first year, I was one of the 
the top agents in our board, one of the top rookies. I was rookie of the year. I helped like 33, 34 families buy a house that year. I made $45,000. Um, I was excited, but I was also burnt out because Jim worked all the time. There was no downtime. It was up early to bed late. Uh, we'd be eating meals late. Uh, we started, you know, having drinks and cocktails at late into the night. And uh, I'm 22 years old now. I'm about 25 pounds overweight, uh, feeling a little bit fried, you know, not really certain where I'm going to go with this. And I was comparing it to my dad, and my dad had a a system that was running his business. This was all personality based. It was like really how hard could you work, not how good could your system work. So um, I started to reevaluate a little bit, like what am I going to do, and started to look for a better way. And that's the starting point for all shift, looking for a better way. And I met a guy named Rick, and Rick called me into his office. He said, hey, Joe, I, know, I love Jim, and I make about twice as much money as Jim, and I work half the amount of time. I go, well, how do you do that? And he goes, well, I've got a for sale by owner system. I've got an expired listing system. I have a system to show buyers homes. And he kept on using that word system, system, system. And I just kept on thinking, that's what my dad has, is he has a system. So um, Rick took me under his wing, shared with me what his secrets were. I fouled and copied his methods. I doubled my sales. I started to work far less, and I started to really enjoy the business. And Rick said, boy, wouldn't it be nice if you could teach this to some of the people in the office? And I said, I'd love to. Because remember, my mom's a school teacher. My dad's an entrepreneur. My mom always wanted me to teach school. My dad always wanted me to have my own business. And it was a nice combination. I'm in my own business, and I'm teaching the people in our office. And we started to have some success. And some of the agents I was helping out were starting to produce more. And Rick gave me an incentive. He says, for every transaction they do, I'm going to give you a little bonus. And I started making more money from the bonuses from the other agents who were in my training than I was actually from my own production. And that got exciting. But the real shift came when um, a man from the Tom Hopkins company came in to sell us tickets to a seminar. So we're all in the conference room, and he's making this presentation. And Rick was sitting next to me, and Rick turned to me and says, you know, you'd be good at that. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, see what that guy is doing? You'd be good at that. And I started to watch this guy present the Tom Hopkins program. And afterwards, I walked up to him, I said, well, tell me about what you do. And he goes, I'll, you know, go around and help people enroll into the Tom Hopkins event. And I said, I think I'd be pretty good at this. And he goes, well, why don't you call Mike and tell him? So I called up Mike. I said, hey, Mike, I talked to Jerry. That was the guy who was doing the presentation. He said, I should call you. I think I'd be pretty good at that. So I met with Mike. You know, Mike, after our interview, goes, I think you'd be pretty good at this. You know, so it just goes to show you that just those subtle words from Rick, I think you'd be good at that. The right words from the right person at the right time can change your destiny. And uh, I, you know, slowly over time, I started to leave the real estate business and go to work for Tom Hopkins. And I was invited to move to Southern California where I could take a bigger role after uh, some initial success. I got out to Southern California and I really got excited about the whole seminar business. I loved adult education. I loved that people wanted to improve themselves. I love the fact that I got to be an entrepreneur and have my own business and, and fill seminar rooms up. So I learned everything that was behind the scenes. And I did that for a few years. And uh, I met a man named Brian Tracy. Some of you know Brian. And uh, Brian was so influential in my life because he gave me permission to move out of the promotion business and actually become a trainer. Uh, I had been working with him, helping him fill up his rooms. And I said, Brian, I think I can do what you do. I think I could stand in front of the group and teach real estate agents you know, what I learned as a real, realtor. And he says, go for it. I encourage you to go for it. And it was like, one more time, the right person at the right time giving you instruction. And so I went for it and I started a company called Star Performance. And what Star Performance did was offered a free seminar to real estate agents. And at the free seminar, what I would do is I would uh, teach them my methods and sell a set of tapes. And we introduced that concept of the free half-day seminar. And I spent uh, two years on the road, uh, maybe 23 to 25 days uh, a month, traveling from city to city, selling my books and my tapes. And it was in 1988, after about three or four years of doing this, I got completely burnt out. I was flying home from Minneapolis, Minnesota, end of the year, December 17th, 18th, and I was completely burnt out. I, uh, spiritually, mentally, uh, emotionally, psychologically, physically, um, I was uh, 
having a difficult time with my marriage. Uh, things were, were not working for me in my life. I had to figure out a different way to do this. And I met another man uh, at the time, and again, the right words from the right person at the right time. His name was Cabot Roberts. And Cabot said, Joe, you could either keep the same talk and go find a new audience, or you can develop yourself and keep the same audience. And it was a real shift for me because what it meant was I had to work on me and then keep the same group of people to train. So that meant not looking for a new client all the time, but giving the client that I already had more and richer and better. And so I started to embrace that philosophy. And then I met another man, again, the right words from the right person at the right time, a guy named Jay Abraham. And Jay introduced me to this whole concept of building a referral business. And it happened when I was at um, one of his conferences. Jay would do a three-day class, $5,000 per person. And I was sitting next to a man named David Corbin. And, and uh, David and I were there at the conference together. And uh, I remember the, poignantly because it was at a moment where I was going to get up and go to the bathroom. I said, Dave, I'll be right back. And he goes, no, no, stick around because this next speaker is somebody you're going to want to hear. And his name was Michael Bosch. And he was the co-founder of Federal Express. And he was sharing with us the story about a man named Patty Lund. And Patty Lund was a dentist in Australia who had built a dental practice that had caused him to be psychologically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually completely burnt out, just like I had experienced. And he had turned it around. And I was really searching right now for how to turn this around. And what Patty discovered was that he had to organize his business so he really fulfilled the needs and the wants of the customer. Because most people don't want to go to a dentist. They need to, but they don't want to. They, they don't like the way it feels. They don't like to pay the money. They don't like the smell when you walk in the office. They don't like the sound of the drill. There's a lot of things that they don't like about going to a dentist. And I thought, that's just like real estate. There's a lot of people that don't like going to a real estate agent. And they're very similar. They're the horrible things that happen. Most people hate the process of buying a house. They love the house. I love clean teeth, but they hate the process of getting the house or getting the clean teeth. So I was really inquisitive. What did he do? So he described how he changed his office to reflect a home where he uh, put a fireplace in and he put uh, fresh bread, bread being baked every day. So when you walked in, you, ah, mom, I'm home, as opposed to walking in and hearing the drill, you know, you know, all that sound. And he really addressed the need of the client. And he did it all the way through the whole dental practice. And, and when he set up the whole new practice, he wrote a letter to his clients and he said, I'm going to restart my business and it's going to be based on you introducing me to your friends and your family members. So he met with each one of the clients and he says, I want to be your dentist. And I want to be your dentist for life. It's conditional though. And the condition is you have to introduce me to at least one friend or family member who's like you because I'm not going to be open to the public. I'm going to only work with people who are clients of mine and their friends and family members. And I remember sitting there at my table and I wrote down for the very first time, by referral only. And I circled the words and I said to David, that's the name of our new company, by referral only. And he smiled and it was one of those moments, the right person at the right time just acknowledging. And I went, yes. And I got really excited about learning what it would take for a real estate agent or a lender to build a practice where your business came to you all through referrals. And that's what we've been spending the last 20 years doing is looking at all the systems, the methods, the processes, the language, everything that we have to do in order to build a buyer referral business. And it started for me by just approaching the top agents in North America. So I went and found the top agent in San Diego, the top agent in Chicago, the top agent in Kansas, top agent in Florida, top agents in Texas. And I approached these individuals and I said, I will personally coach you and show you how to build a referral business. And each of them, one of them were really excited because they were all making gross revenue but no net profit because they were spending all of their money on advertising and promotion to get their new client, next client. And that next client was also often resistant. They were mistrusting and it caused a lot of havoc in their life. And what I noticed with all these top agents, they're all burnt out spiritually, psychologically, emotionally, but they were the top agents. They're the one that everybody was saying, be like them. And so my message to them was, hey, I think I can help you change your business, 
raise your income, but improve your life. And they were all ears. So I started to go to work mentoring and, and working with them individually, one on one. And I had some enormous success stories. People were, were going from doing 60, 70 transactions a year to doing 80, 90 transactions a year, but do it in half the time. Had people that were doing 40, 50 transactions, turned it up to 100 transactions and doing it in half the time. But all of them had a common denominator. They, really now love the business. Uh, emotionally, they were more stable, physically stronger, mentally more alert, uh, psychologically uh, more focused, uh, spiritually more connected. So I knew from these results that by referral only was a movement, not a technique. This was what the industry needed. It was a new direction. And so we took all of our resources and we started putting it all into building structures and systems and methods to teach the buy referral only way. And the results, oh, they've been astonishing. For the last 20 years, over 150,000 real estate agents and lenders have come through our three-day training event. We've had 10 to 12,000 people we've had through our coaching programs. And the feedback is incredible. What people tell us is not only are they making more money, of course you're going to make more money. Whenever you like what you're doing, you make more money. Uh, they're spiritually more connected. They feel more purposeful. They know that what they're doing every day is mission focused. Physically, they're in better condition. Uh, they, they take care of themselves better because they know if they take care of themselves better, they can take care of other people better. Mentally, they're alert because they know that they have to work harder on themselves than they do on their business. They're, they're not looking for a new audience. What they're doing is working on themselves so they can keep their same audience. And of course, they're much better off with their family and their friends, and they just love who they are. And, and that's what buy referral only is. Buy referral only is a philosophy backed up with systems, structures, and support to help you become the best version of yourself. And that's what my life has been about for the last 25 years, is to take what I had to struggle with in the beginning to try to figure this out. Uh, I had to go through the process of being completely burnt out, completely worn out, spiritually, mentally, financially. And then I had to go find the people and find the, the learning. And I continue to do that every single day and then put it into a process and then deliver it every day to the buy referral only members. And uh, it's a great life. Buy referral only is a great way to build a business and build a great life.